One win down, three more to go. The Brew Crew held on last night, and now we're looking ahead to game two this afternoon. And what a steal. The Brewers' playoff run is helping out Packers fans hoping to score affordable tickets to Monday night's game. We'll explain why straight ahead. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good Saturday morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Saturday, it is 8 a.m. on this October 13th. I'm Josh Breider with meteorologist Chris Reese. I think that uh, cold weather has me kind of stuttering this morning. It <laughs> yeah, is, it is very it is cold. chilly this morning. I stepped outside just to, uh, I guess, take in the frost earlier today, just trying to be positive about the fact that we're already seeing a lot of the frosty conditions it out there. It looks pretty. It does look pretty. I will say that. Our tree in the backyard, absolutely shining with that on it. But we still have freeze warnings in effect until 9 o'clock this this morning. Temperatures though are finally starting to respond and we are above freezing here in Madison. So 34 right now, 30 in Watertown and Juno, 28 right now in Black River Falls. Now we made it down to 29 this morning, but as we zoom things out, you'll notice Wisconsin's kind of the bathtub for all the cold air, if you will. It's warmer all around Wisconsin, especially to the north and west, and that is because a warm front is coming in, and that's going to play a role in our weather. Winds are calm right now, but we're going to see those turning out of the south as we go through the day. You know what? We've seen some cloud cover on the increase as well. I'm not too concerned about that cloud cover right now, but we're going to see even more of that cloud cover, especially this afternoon. That's ahead of a rain chance that'll move in overnight tonight. It's a pretty weak rain chance. Better rain chances will come Sunday night. Here's a live look at John Nolan on the belt line. People are out this morning. They are doing their thing, but traffic is moving smoothly. No major issues or delays in the city of Madison. You mentioned we're kind of in that bathtub. I pr prefer my uh, bath hot <laughs> and not ice baths. Uh, so. no, uh, every now and then, a cold bath or a cold shower is good. I guess that's what we're getting today. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you. My pleasure. We begin in Milwaukee this morning where the Brewers are celebrating a big win last night. They beat the Dodgers 6-5 to five in Game 1 of the National League Championship Series at Miller Park. News 3 Sports' Melissa Kim shows us the game-changing moment for the team in a victory that came down to two outs in the ninth. So the Brewers squeaking by the Dodgers in Game 1 of the NLCS last night. And the difference in this game ended up being Brandon Woodruff's solo home run off of Clayton Kershaw in the third inning. Are you kidding? Not just a career moment for him, but a momentum swing in this game. It's something, you know, obviously coming into the day, you don't know in your wildest dreams that that's going to happen. Definitely changed the uh, changed the vibe for sure. And once I knew it was going, it was just one of those uh, kind of moments where you just, you're not really thinking, you know, you, and you just, I was just letting some emotion out. And, um, um, you know, it, it was a cool moment and... I was happy that I could just go out there and, and do it for the team. So about those guys in the bullpen, and do they like at-bats? Do they practice swinging at all? Well, don't expect anything from Josh Hader. I personally do not get any at-bats, don't practice it at all. Um, I do not like hitting. That's why I became a pitcher, because I couldn't hit a fastball or a curveball. Now I figured out I can't hit a changeup. What to expect now from this carefully concocted pitching situation? Well, Craig Council told us last night after the game that it'll just depend on who's available. At Miller Park, Melissa Kim, News 3 This Morning. So will the Brewers nab their 13th consecutive win? Well, we'll have to watch and see. First pitch of game two is at 3.09 this afternoon at Miller Park. If you're hoping to score some tickets to Monday night's Packers game, you're in luck. The Monday night Brewers game in L.A. is causing a drop in sales for the Packers 49ers game. A lot of fans say they are planning on going to a multi-screen sports bar or staying home with remote in hand, flipping back and forth between the pack and the crew. Ticket brokers say Monday night Lambeau Field tickets are usually difficult to buy, but with the competition from the Brewers game, many are selling at $20 below face values. They say on game day you could find tickets at 50 bucks or less. On a very busy Saturday of sports, the Badgers are ready for their second Big Ten game on the road this season. They're in Ann Arbor against Michigan. The Badgers are ranked 15th right now, while the Wolverines are 12th. News 3 Sports Director Jay Wilson has your three things to watch for in tonight's game. 
When the Badgers play at Michigan tonight at 6.30, here are three things to watch. The Badgers seem to have recovered nicely from their loss to BYU with solid wins at Iowa and last week against Nebraska. Jonathan Taylor's back on track with 221 yards against the Cornhuskers. He's again leading the country with an average of 168 yards rushing per game. But the Badgers will face a great test against Jim Harbaugh's Michigan team. Their quarterback, Shea Patterson, transferred from Ole Miss in the offseason, and he figures, uh, looks like he's figuring things out. After a slow start, he's the second most efficient passer in the Big Ten. And winning at Michigan will be a huge challenge for the Badgers. Wisconsin has won its last 10 true road games, but its last road loss was at Michigan, 2016. They'll have over 107,000 fans in the Big House, but the Badgers say it's not intimidating there. It's fun. And those are three things to watch with Wisconsin and Michigan. ESPN's College Game Day will broadcast from Ann Arbor this morning. Kickoff is set for 630. Well, in other news this morning, UW-Madison campus was politically charged last night. The first debate was held between Republican Attorney General Brad Schimmel and his Democratic challenger Josh Call. The debate started off with Call accusing Schimmel of taking too long to test thousands of unanalyzed sexual assault kits and for spending money on promotional material rather than prioritizing the kits. Schimmel countered that the testing is done and he solved a decades-long problem in three years. The two also talked about their plan to battle the state's growing opioid epidemic. Uh, first, I think we need to ensure that our uh, enforcement efforts are targeting large-scale traffickers who are sending drugs like heroin and fentanyl and meth across county lines and state lines. I am proud to have worked to dismantle drug trafficking conspiracies as a federal prosecutor, and I think we need to do more of that, uh, From our, have our AG's office play a bigger role uh, in those types of cases. But we also need to expand access to treatment far more seriously than we have so far, so that people who fall into the trap of addiction are able to get the help they need to get back on their feet. And then I think we need an AG who's going to be serious, finally, about holding the pharmaceutical companies accountable. I made this my number one priority as Attorney General, and we're leading the nation in the work we're doing. Wisconsin's recognized as a national leader. I put, on the enforcement side, I put many more agents in the field working drug cases. I put regional prosecutors throughout Wisconsin to work on this. We have increased the availability of safety equipment for law enforcement and increased their training to be able to do this effectively. We wrote and obtained the largest methamphetamine and heroin enforcement grants in the nation right here in Wisconsin, and that's money we're turning out to law enforcement agencies to do effective work. But I know from my experience that we won't arrest our way out of this drug epidemic. We need a comprehensive approach, and that's what we've put in place. The candidates will debate two more times before Election Day. Candidates running for a seat in the U.S. Senate will debate tonight. This will be their second time debating this week. Incumbent U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin and challenger State Senator Leah Vukmir will be in Wausau for the debate. It's sponsored by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. You can watch the debate right here on WISC TV 3 starting at 7. It is day three of the Wisconsin Science Festival and from flight simulators to a robot zoo, there's really something for everyone. The four-day festival includes events across the state from here in Madison to Baraboo and La Crosse. Today there are several sessions focused on getting more women and minorities interested in STEM-related careers. You can find out more about the hundreds of events happening around Wisconsin on their website right there at the bottom of your screen right now at WISCIFest.org. The cold is clearly here this morning, which means snow isn't far behind. And whether we like it or not, it's time to start preparing your car for winter. The Middleton Police Department is hosting a car weatherization event this morning for any elderly folks who'd like to learn some tips. That's at Middleton Ford from 9 to noon. Mechanics will check your settings and safety features to make sure everything is ready for the freezing temperatures and snow. You can call the number on your screen to schedule an appointment. A first alert traffic note for people driving on Madison's east side this weekend. Stoughton Road is closed in both directions between Highway 30 and East Washington Avenue. Crews are working to repair the railroad crossing there. This comes after a number of drivers complained about the condition of that crossing. Some have claimed they've actually had to slam on their brakes or risk ruining their suspensions. The closure started at 8 o'clock last night and runs until 6 a.m. Monday. Traffic is being detoured to East Wash, the interstate, and Highway 30. 
Well, it's just about 10 minutes past 8, and after a roller coaster week of highs near 80 and lows in the 30s, we've, we're off to an even colder start this morning. Here's a live look in Platteville to start us off. Look at all those trees. We're finally starting to see that call, fall color pop. Chris is in next with that full weekend forecast coming up. And if you're hunkering in with the colder temperatures this morning, there are several shows and movies for you this weekend. Well, as your three things to watch when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues. Well, good Saturday morning. Uh, it is a day out of January in Kentucky, at least. So this is quite a change being in Wisconsin. Of course, it is October. We're starting out with temperatures that were in the 20s earlier, but we've responded. Temperatures are now in the 30s and the low to mid 30s at that, at least here in Madison and for Point South. As you work your way towards the north, temperatures are still a little bit cooler, but they'll begin to rise as we go throughout the morning. As we zoom things out across the upper Midwest. You'll notice parts of Minnesota and the Dakotas, those are in the upper 30s and even some low 40s, and that's because a warm front has come through those areas. That'll be impacting us later on through the day. But in the meantime, we have a mix of some sun and some cloud cover out there. The winds are calm, but as we go throughout the rest of today, we will notice those winds begin to turn and come more out of the south. And even though it's also cloudy, we're not worried about any rain or even snow for that matter here in the Madison area as of now. We can zoom out and there were some snow showers and some rain showers across parts of Minnesota earlier this morning, but those will dry out. That won't actually make it to us and the Midwest as a whole is cry quiet and the reason for that is because we do have high pressure that's in control. There's not a lot of moisture for that warm front that's coming through. 
but a cold front will come through as we go through early tomorrow morning and into tomorrow night. There will be a weak little wave of low pressure that kind of rides along that cold front. That'll bring the possibility of some showers and we could be just cold enough that a wet snowflake or two mixes in with those showers tomorrow night, but it really won't be all that big of a deal. Here we are by lunchtime. Temperatures should make it into the mid 40s by then we will likely top out in the low 50s for highs this afternoon. Notice the clouds do in increase once again into the overnight hours. A few showers can't be ruled out, especially north of Madison. Then here we are tomorrow morning way to the north and west. You notice a little streak of some light rain and snow coming into the picture again. That won't last long. Kind of the better chance for rain will be during the later hours of Sunday. That'll likely be a cold rain, but again, a wet snowflake or two can't be ruled out depending on when that comes in here. But temperatures behind that will be well below average going through pretty much the rest of the week. We're going to see a lot of days with temperatures that are in the 40s, but that'll be coupled with plenty of sunshine as well. In fact, other than tomorrow and tomorrow night, there are really no rain chances in our 10 day forecast, Josh. And seeing that extended day, Chris, just puts a smile on my face with all that sunshine. Oh, absolutely. I am excited for this week coming up. It's going to be fantastic. I've got a friend coming. We're going to see the fall colors, and it's the perfect weather for it. It certainly is. All right, Chris, thank you. My pleasure. Imagine all the people. Yoko Ono is honoring her late husband John Lennon with a cover version of his iconic song Imagine. She released the song to commemorate what would have been the music legend's 78th birthday. Until recently, the song was credited solely to Lennon, but Ono was added as a co-writer last year. Right now, a collection of handwritten lyrics and sketches from Bob Dylan are on display at a gallery in London. The lyrics of some of Dylan's best known songs from 1961 to 2006 are paired with drawings made by the singer. This exhibit is the first time ever that Dylan has allowed the music and his words to be linked to visual art. The collection will travel to China next year and then head to Europe before eventually making it to the U.S. From music to movies this morning, grab an apple cider, a bag of popcorn, and curl up on the couch. There are plenty of shows and films you can enjoy this weekend without leaving the comfort of your own home. Here's Will Loper with your three things to watch. Hey guys, uh, it's Kayla back with another video. New on home video this week is the movie Eighth Grade. Not quiet. Most quiet, Kayla Day. I don't talk a lot at school, but if people talk to me and stuff, they'd find out that I'm like really funny and cool and talkative. The highly reviewed film follows a 13 year old girl who navigates school, friendships, and family. I'm really like nervous all the time. I try really hard not to feel that way, but you just need to face your fears and let people know they're really you. Eighth grade is available to rent or buy everywhere now. One more week of eighth grade, huh? Huh? I said one more week of eighth grade, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, huh? Now I want you two to get good rest. What if I have a bad dream? Well, I'm sure we can handle any dream you have. Start getting into the spooky October mood with a new show on Netflix, The Haunting of Hill House. The show follows five siblings who grew up in the most haunted house in America. We're not like any other family. We're different because of where we grew up. All 10 episodes of The Haunting of Hill House are available to stream on Netflix now. You don't have to worry now, sweetie. That really bad dream? Of course I'd wake you. If you're looking for something less scary but still Halloween related, check out 2001's Donnie Darko. Why are you wearing that stupid bunny suit? Why are you wearing that stupid man suit? In the days leading up to Halloween 1988, Jake Gyllenhaal stars as a boy who must save the world by doing what a time-traveling bunny named Frank tells him to do. Uh, has he ever told you about his friend Frank? Frank? 
Yes, the giant bunny rabbit. The what? They are in great danger. Where did you come from? Do you believe in time travel? Donnie Darko is available to rent or buy everywhere now. People run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch, and this is Will Loper for News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Denzel Washington's story career puts him back in the spotlight. The 63-year-old actor is being honored by the American Film Institute. He's going to receive the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award in Los Angeles next year. Washington has nine Academy Award nominations, including Oscar wins for Glory and Training Day. He also won a Tony Award for Fences. 20 minutes past 8, making sure bikers are seen. That's the dilemma one American city is facing, and now they think they have a solution. They say these ballards were fast to put up, cheap to build, and are good looking. Would they work here in Madison? We'll take a closer look when News 3 This Morning Saturday returns. Good morning. We do have a mix of sun and clouds in the area so far. Temperatures, though, have been warming up with the sunrise. We're at 34 degrees right now. Winds are calm and we're going to be turning those out of the south as we go through the rest of the afternoon. Now, we still do have freeze warnings in effect. Those are going to stay in effect for about the next uh, 
38 minutes or so. They do expire at 9 o'clock, but temperatures will make it into the mid 40s as we get you towards lunchtime, likely topping out into the low 50s for highs this afternoon with increasing cloud cover. Josh. Chris, thank you. It is 824 this morning. The state of Wisconsin is asking for your help tracking wolves, coyotes and bobcats this winter. The DNR's monitoring program relies on volunteers to identify tracks along thousands of miles. There are training courses available to people who might be interested in getting involved. Most of them happen up north where you'll find those wolf packs. You can visit the DNR's website for more information. Just search carnivore tracking. If biking is more your speed, as it is for many Wisconsinites, especially here in Madison, be sure to listen to this. A California city is elevating its bike safety game with a new installment they say is both effective and good looking. Kiat Du explains. When it comes to increasing bike safety in San Jose, the Department of Transportation was going for fast, cheap, and good looking. The DOT believes they got three out of three with these new green plastic posts along 3rd Street called bollards. This is, I think, the prettiest solution that we can do on a, on a short budget in a quick time frame. Crews have installed 1,900 of them, mostly in downtown San Jose. At eight inches across with thick bands of reflective tape, they do their intended job well. Separate the bike lane from car traffic to give cyclists more breathing room. Do you feel safer? Oh yeah, definitely the separations from the car and the bike lane is a pretty big gap, so you're definitely safe. Installation takes a few minutes each with drilling into the asphalt and attaching a six inch bolt with some epoxy. They're flexible yet sturdy enough to withstand more than a few moderate bumps. Include people walking into them, hopefully not driving into them, but uh, that will doubtless happen eventually. Speaking of, vehicles looking to make right turns will be forced to slow down and go wide. The idea is to make sure bikers stay out of the car's blind spot. Yeah. I think they're a good idea. If you're already gonna gentrify this entire city, you might as well just do the smallest of favors to people that want to save on gas is riding the bike lanes and I think it's going to help a lot of people stay out of their cars. As for the color, the DOT picked green after some community input and also because it matches the bike lane colors. A quick check of the manufacturer's website shows San Jose could have fared a lot worse, especially with black and brown. LA's Westwood neighborhood has them in white and the only other Bay Area city to have them is Palo Alto also in white. What do you tell people who say that the bollards are kind of ugly? Um, well, safety is our number one priority. Total cost was $1.5 million. Love them or hate them, the bollards are only temporary and should last long enough until the city can find the money for a more permanent solution. In San Jose, Kitto, KPIX 5. 827 right now and still ahead a check of this morning's headlines, including the bargain price tickets you can snag ahead of Monday night's Packers game. Plus, from award-winning folk singers to friendly furry animals and traditional Indian dancing, the popular Kids in the Rotunda series is back at the Oberger. Get out your calendars. News through this morning Saturday will return in a moment.
Straight ahead this morning, a preview of this month's diverse lineup of local, regional, and national performers all coming to the Overture, specifically picked to entertain kids. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. And a very good morning to you and welcome back to News 3 This Morning, Saturday. It is just after 8.30 on this October 13th. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese is tracking your very sunny forecast in just a moment. But first, we begin this half hour with what's making news this morning. And what a win for the Brewers as we start off right now. The Brew Crew beat the Dodgers 6-5 in Game 1 of the National League Championship Series at Miller Park last night. The Brewers leaned on their bullpen after jumping out to an early lead, thanks in part to reliever Brandon Woodruff's solo home run against Clayton Kershaw. Milwaukee has now won 12 straight games. They haven't lost since September 22nd. Game 2 will be played at Miller Park this afternoon. First pitch is at 3.09. Right now, the Monday Night Brewers game in L.A. is causing a drop in ticket sales for the Packers 49ers game. Lots of fans are planning on going to a multi-screen sports bar or staying home with remote in hand, flipping back and forth, of course, between the pack and the crew. Ticket brokers say Monday night Lambeau Field tickets are usually a difficult get, but with the competition from the Brewers game, many are selling at $20 below face value. On game day, you could find tickets at 50 bucks or less. And on this very busy sports-filled Saturday, the Badgers are getting ready for their second Big Ten game on the road tonight. They're in Ann Arbor to face Michigan. The Badgers are now ranked 15th, while the Wolverines are sitting at 12th. The last time the Badgers lost a conference game on the road was back in 2016 when they lost at Michigan. ESPN's College Game Day will be broadcasting from Ann Arbor this morning. Kickoff is set for 6.30. Coming up on 8.33 this Saturday morning, a cold start, but really a nice Saturday on the way today, Chris. Yeah, that's right. It should be a pretty beautiful day. I'm watching the cloud cover out there. Sometimes clouds are hard to predict, and they can burn a forecast. So we're going to watch that closely, but temperatures... They're warming up, so we still have some freeze warnings. Those should be allowed to expire at 9 o'clock. At this point, the freezing conditions are no longer around. Temperatures have made it above freezing here in Madison. 34 for Madison, Janesville, and Monroe. 36 over a Mineral Point. We're still below freezing as you get up towards Watoma. That's where the temperature is at 28 degrees right now. But as we zoom things out, those freezing conditions over Wisconsin, they are falling by the wayside. Warmer temperatures are just to the south and west. And with the warm front that came through, those warmer temperatures will be increasing as we do go throughout the day. But in the meantime, the temperature is 34. Those winds are calm. We'll watch them turn out of the south later on. We should not be concerned with any rain or snow for that matter falling out of the cloud cover that is out there. We essentially have high pressure and control, so we should see some sunshine that'll be mixed with more cloud cover as we go through the afternoon and evening, then thicker cloud cover overnight and into your Sunday. That is when we actually will have a little bit of a rain chance coming into the picture. Traffic wise, this is John Nolan. There are people out and about, but that traffic is moving very smoothly this morning. We do not have any major issues or delays across the city of Madison. Josh. All right. Chris, thank you. Time right now is 834. There's a chance for you to help kids who might otherwise not get the chance to go to college this weekend. We've told you about Opportunity 34. It's a new scholarship program in Verona, named after Will Kellerman's basketball number. The 21-year-old was killed in a car crash in Verona last fall. His family wants to help other kids further their education. They're donating the proceeds of a basketball tournament happening today to the scholarship. The event is at C. Verona on Prairie Heights Drive. You can find more information on the Channel 3000 mobile app. Engaging, educational, and of course entertaining. The Overture's popular Kids in the Rotunda series is back for a new season, bringing a diverse lineup of local and national performers ready to entertain young audiences. Mary Rose is the program coordinator of the Kids in the Rotunda. She joins us this morning with what we can expect this month. Thanks for coming in. Hi, thank you for having me, Josh. So tell us a little bit about what you guys do over there. So Kids in the Rotunda is a free family performance series that operates October through April, nearly every Saturday. We have performances at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and also at 1 p.m., and that performance is sign language interpreted. Um, so the performance series has been around for uh, about 37 years, uh, so we are lucky enough to have a lot of parents who are bringing their children to this series who went when they were children as well. 
Um, we offer a really diverse lineup, like you said, of musicians, drummers, dancers, uh, magicians, jugglers, all sorts of entertainment. And it's really a wonderful opportunity for kids to uh, explore creativity and begin to build an appreciation for the arts. Is there a certain age that you guys kind of target? Yeah, so we target um, about two through 10. Uh, so it depends on the show. Some shows are more suitable for a little bit older audiences or a little bit younger audiences. I would like to say our average age right now of our attendees is probably about three to five. Okay, so why is something like this important for the community? That's a great question. Uh, so I really think that Kids in the Rotunda nurtures an understanding of the importance of creativity and the power of creativity in the community. And it also gets uh, young children and their families comfortable at Overture and begins to sort of nurture an understanding for um, arts appreciation and um, uh, all of the different ways that we can be creative. So we have a lot of different kinds of creativity. Um, last week, for instance, uh, when we started off Kids in the Rotunda, we brought in Zoozort Live Animal Program. So we had a uh, USDA licensed animal educator come in and talk about um, her animals. So we can do a lot of different things in the performing arts. And I, I love that children have the opportunity to see that diversity. So you guys are obviously very busy over there every month. What can people expect here in the next uh, coming weekends? Yeah, so today we are welcoming a mad scientist into the rotunda who is going to be introducing children to the world of chemistry. Uh, this event is part of the Wisconsin Science Festival, which, which runs October 11th through 14th and has a lot of different events for uh, people young and old, scientists and non-scientists across the state. All right, well, if people are interested in coming and checking you guys out, how can they get some more information? That's a great question. Uh, I would encourage anybody to follow us on Facebook at Overture's Kids in the Rotunda or to check out our website, overture.org slash KIR. We have all of our uh, events listed on there. And if you follow us on Facebook, we post seating updates as well as information about upcoming shows. Well, certainly sounds like a lot of fun for the little kiddos out there. Yeah, it is. And uh, we'll be rounding out the season with uh, three other performances this month. We have on October 24th, which is actually a Wednesday, a special Kids in the Rotunda for Downtown Madison Family Halloween. And we'll be welcoming our local performer, Ken Longquist, who will be singing some spooky songs uh, from his Pumpkinland album. And then we'll have, we'll be giving away candy and be doing a costume photo booth from 3 to 6 p.m. And then on October 20th, we're bringing a new performer. Uh, her name is Angela. Angela Puerta, and she is a Colombian singer-songwriter who will be singing in English and Spanish. And then on October 27th, we will be doing our annual sing-along with the Jerry Ensemble. Uh, the Jerry Ensemble is a group of very talented local high school musical theater students, and they will be uh, doing a sing-along with our kids. And this is actually the 10th anniversary of the Jerry Awards, which is Overture's High School Musical Awards program. So we're very excited to have them back. All right. Well, good luck to everything, yeah. and we'll see you here next time, Mary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Stay with us. More news through this morning, Saturday, right after this.
Good morning. We do have a mix of sun and cloud cover out there. Temperatures are in the 30s right now, but by the time we get you towards lunchtime, we should see them starting to warm into the mid 40s. But that's when the cloud cover really kind of comes in. So that's going to hinder the ability for temperatures to warm up substantially beyond that. But we should see a high right around 50 degrees or so today. Overnight, those temperatures drop once again ahead of a minor rain chance. We'll have increasing rain chances late Sunday night, but it should be light. All right, light is what I like to hear. Mm -hmm. What is the weekend in the 608? And here's a look at what's going on around town. The summer outdoor music season may be over, but there are still festivals to attend. The Wisconsin Book Festival continues this weekend. The event's mission is to engage authors and readers at events held year-round. This is the weekend when the most literary town converges at the Madison Central Library and other downtown venues. Among them, Rebecca Treister. She's the author of Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger. She'll be this evening, and panels of women writers of science fiction will be this morning. There's also the Wisconsin Science Festival happening this weekend. It's the event's eighth year at the University of Wisconsin-Madison campus. It aims to spark interest and discovery in people of all ages. There are presentations and science projects on display and a whole bunch of panels featuring some of the brightest scientific minds. You can check out the full schedule at wisconsinsciencefest.org slash events. A Grammy Award winning musician is in town this weekend. On Sunday night, 20 time Grammy Award winner Pat Metheny, known for or her play with improvisation, jazz guitar, and other instruments, will be at the Memorial Union Shannon Hall. You can catch the show tomorrow at 8 p.m. There are also a couple performances this weekend by women artists meant to upset expectations. The first is music theater of Madison's production titled Beyond Ingenue. And Ingenue is a musical theater, or in musical theater, is a female character depicted as a naive and unsophisticated person. But in this production, the women on stage will be dealing with real issues and singing the works by famous female musicians such as Sarah Bareilles and Dolly Parton. Beyond the Ingenue is held, or they held their first performance last night at the Brink Lounge, but will be performing four more times over the next couple of weeks in Black Earth, Stoughton, and Middleton. The other notable event is Dancing on the Ceiling, performances by a women, by women of a certain age. It's co-presented by Lai Chim Ping, the dance and the UW Madison Dance Department. It will consist of seven acclaimed female dancers over 50. It takes place this afternoon in the performance space in Lathrop Hall. As always, you can pick up a copy of this month's Madison Magazine for all of the best in the Madison area. Coming up on 845 right now, it's like we skipped from summer to winter this week with temperatures swinging from near 80 to the low 30s. But what else do you expect here in the Midwest? That's right. You're looking over the Capitol this Saturday morning live where farmers and shoppers are in for a chilly market. I'll have your full forecast next. But first, happy third birthday to Hannah and all the other kiddos celebrating their birthday today. We thank you for watching News 3 This Morning Saturday.
Good morning, folks. Temperatures are a little bit warmer as opposed to where we started today in the 20s, but they are still pretty chilly out there. It's 37 degrees in Madison right now, 33 in the Dells. Black River Falls at 31, Watoma at 28. So you see that freezing line right around South Central Wisconsin and gradually working its way farther to the north. Warmer air can be found just to the south and west. 40s across parts of Iowa, upper 30s as you work your way into northern Minnesota. That's a warm front that's going to be moving into town. We're already seeing some of the cloud cover out ahead of that. And winds have now turned out of the south at six miles per hour. We're going to continue to see that southerly wind helping those temperatures jump as we do go through the day. But with the warm front, we're not concerned about any kind of rain or snow for that matter coming out of the clouds. We do have clear radar or a clear radar right across Wisconsin. There is some light rain and snow across northern Minnesota, but see that's falling apart because we just have high pressure in control. So that's the reason the entire upper Midwest is fairly dry, but that high pressure is working its way to the east. A warm front comes through, then comes a cold front overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. There's going to be a weak little wave of low pressure riding along that cold front, bringing snow to parts of Kansas and Nebraska. But that is going to be getting crushed by the high pressure coming in. So it'll try to send some light rain or snow our way, but there's just not going to be enough strength in that system before it just kind of fizzles out with high pressure coming on in behind that. So today we'll watch our temperatures respond under a southerly wind 46 by lunchtime. We'll see your highs right around 50. The clouds come in overnight. You'll notice a few showers here or there. Most of those showers will be to our north. Tomorrow morning, we could see a streak of light snow well to our north, and again, none of that will stick. The ground is, of course, fairly warm by tomorrow night. That is when our next little round of rain will come through. Again, that'll be light rain, but if you get a heavier little shower, the upper atmosphere is cold enough that you could see a wet snowflake or two mix in with that rain. So that's one of the things we will be paying close attention to. But behind that front, temperatures are going to struggle to get out of the 40s again for the next several days. So we're going to watch those temperatures fall to well below average temperatures until next weekend. We'll get a rebound that'll be closer to average before temperatures drop once again. But on the bright side, yes, the bright side. Woo! Can't see what I did there. We're going to see plenty of sunshine going through the next seven to 10 days. Perfect for those fall colors. Oh, <laughs> Batman. Come on. We need you, Batman. <laughs> Batman looks a little tuckered out I know, there. and Lodi, that is what I'm going to do <laughs> here in about 10 minutes once we wrap up this show. It certainly <laughs> is good napping weather, I that's know. for sure. Well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this photo Jim Bradley sent us. That's in Manitowoc. You can tell the... It even looks cold out there, doesn't it? <laughs> Lighthouses are beautiful, though. They but, certainly yeah. are. Yeah, the lakes are cooling off. Thanks for sharing, Jim. What does your morning look like? Be sure to take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter. Use that hashtag, MyNews3Morning, and that's how we're able to share our favorites right here on the show. Time right now is 8.51. Be sure to stick with News 3 and Channel 3000 this weekend. On our news at 6 and 10 tonight, a local business is back open several months after closing its doors. We're talking to the new owners of Star Liquor. But first, a student with a rare genetic condition gets an even more rare honor. We'll take you to Kaylee's special night thanks to her classmates when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues.
Welcome back at 855. It is homecoming season at high schools across the country and in California, sophomores voted one of their classmates with special needs this year's homecoming princess. Steve Larch takes us alongside her special night. Look no further than this Liberty Ranch high school football field for a life lesson people here at its homecoming game. You're just going to smile, hold your flowers nice. The sophomore class electing Kaylee Martinez as its homecoming princess. Hey, guys! <laughs> Martinez has a rare condition called Williams syndrome, a genetic disorder. Williams syndrome affects one in 10,000 people, and it occurs at birth, and it can happen to anybody. Kaylee has persevered and says she always wanted to be a princess. Was that fun? Yeah. Were you nervous? No. You did great. Thank you. Her little brother Gavin got her name on the homecoming ballot and the sophomore class made sure she won. I just tell him the smile on her face that she's very thankful and appreciative of what our community did out here. Kaylee's kindness is infectious. Kaylee's one of the favorites by far. Her style, sassy. What did you like about your dress? It's poofy. It's poofy? Yes. Kaylee's classmates giving her a chance to shine at her high school homecoming Love you, Brian. as their class princess. Well, this is a great night for me. I don't want to ever forget it. The sophomores showing true class and sharing a life lesson on this high school football field. Well done, boys! Helping others reach their dreams. That is truly a crowning achievement. Kaylee's favorite classes at school are Spanish and cooking, and when she grows up, she wants to be a teacher. I love that. That's a beautiful story. We need more of those Lots on of the mornings. Positivity. Morning. Absolutely, positivity. And that's what our forecast is going to be. We have got plenty of sunshine in it. There are some rain chances. We'll talk about them. Of course, they're hiding behind the cloud cover in there. But overnight tonight, there's a weak rain chance. And then tomorrow night, there's a minor rain chance. Otherwise, it's sunshine, folks. Sunshine and temperatures that will be in the 40s and 50s for highs and 30s and 40s for lows over the next 10 days. That means the fall colors that have not peaked yet Yay. should be getting ready to take off. I want all the pictures you over can the next finally couple weeks. enjoy some fall. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you back here tomorrow from 630 to 8. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.